In this video, we're going to talk about the monotonic sequence theorem for convergence of sequences. This is a follow-up to our last video. So, let's go to it. Alright, what is this monotonic sequence theorem for convergence? States the following. And that is, if we have a sequence a sub k and it is bounded and it is monotonic then the sequence converges that's the theorem now we're not going to prove the theorem in this video but we're going to try to think about why that might be true and it's a nice result so if somehow you know that the sequence is bounded and it's monotonic then it's always going to converge so remember what bounded means first of all it means that you are bounded above and below so there is some number that exists some real number where all the terms in the sequence are always smaller than or equal to that and there's a number where all the terms in the sequence are um, larger than or equal to that and then monotonic remember means essentially that you're either non-increasing or non-decreasing. It also could mean you're just increasing or decreasing. But essentially, that means that your sequence is not changing directions. It can stay flat for a bit, but it's not going to go up and down. It's either going to constantly go flat then up, or flat then down, or just up or just down. So, that's just a little refresher. Now why this might be, let's take a look at a couple graphs here. This first graph that we see <coughs> is a graph that's showing some sequence. Input down here, k. Output, a sub k. So some sequence here. Notice the dots. And as you can see, in the graph, the smallest value seems to be at 1. Right? So it's that dot right there. Whatever that output is. And then, it's monotonic, for sure. At least it looks that way, because it's not changing directions and in fact it looks like maybe it's an increasing function strictly and then it seems to have some upper bound up here so it's bounded below it's bounded above hence it's bounded and it's monotonic so what that means is that this sequence needs to converge according to the theorem but you think about why that might be well it's not going to go up and down right it's going to continuously go up here increase as our index k increases and then it's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger it seems but never bigger than some particular value so it's got to converge to that value like a horizontal asymptote the alternative to this would be a picture that looks something like this and that is basically the same thing that we saw above except now you have this sequence which seems to be decreasing or at least non-increasing and so at one again as we see that point right there that seems to be our upper bound the biggest value that this sequence ever gets then it decreases hence behaving monotonically and then eventually there's some lower bound down here where the sequence never goes below and so when a sequence is behaving like this it's got to approach some value in the long run as k goes to infinity for the reasons that it can't go above or below some value and it's not going to change directions so essentially that's what the theorem says so if we can identify whether a sequence is bounded and monotonic then we don't even have to take the limit at all we just boom end a story use the theorem to conclude that it converges so it's a short video we're just going to look at a quick example of this and so consider the sequence here sequence 2 to the negative k over 2 so that negative k over 2 is the exponent on the base 2 there notice that 2 to the negative k over 2 is really just the same thing as 2 to the negative half quantity to the k power and that of course is just the same as 1 over 2 to the 1 half power to the k using properties of exponents which is the same as 1 over root 2 quantity to the k. 
So if we're going to write out our sequence here, 2 to the negative k over 2, then that's really just the same as the sequence, 1 over root 2 quantity to the k power. And it was just write out some terms. So if k is 1, we have 1 over root 2. If k is 2, we have 1 half, right? 1 over root 2 squared. And then if k is 3, we have 1 over 2 root 2. If k is 4, we have a fourth. If k is 5, we have 1 over 4 root 2. And so on and so on. And we can see that uh, the pattern here in the terms is that this sequence is decreasing, right? The denominators are getting larger, so let's just write that out. 2 to the negative k over 2 is decreasing, and because it's decreasing, it automatically tells us it's monotonic, so that's nice. And then, notice that because it's decreasing, the largest value uh, that the sequence obtains is that very first value. So 1 over root 2 is your, if I could spell, upper bound. Right, That's the biggest value it gets. And then as k goes to infinity, the denominator just keeps increasing and increasing. So this thing is going to go to 0 in the long run. And that 0 is your lower bound. And so this sequence is bounded above by 1 over root 2, bounded below by 0. So these two things combine, say that the sequence is bounded, and hence this sequence is bounded and it's monotonic, and hence we can conclude by the monotonic sequence theorem. Oh, yes. Sometimes these, this theorem has different names slightly, but more or less this is the monotonic sequence theorem. Because of that, sequence 2 to the negative k over 2 converges. The end. So, I don't know. You might say, oh, just take the limit as k goes to infinity. I'll see it converges anyways. But perhaps you have a more obscure situation in which that is not the easiest thing to do. And if you could instead identify it's bounded and it's monotonic, and that's easier than taking the limit as k goes to infinity, then you can use this theorem to conclude that the sequence converges. And so that's it. That's it for this short video. We have another theorem we're going to look at in the next video involving squeeze theorem. And then we're going to wrap it up with geometric sequences. So until next time, stay safe.